Well, welcome to our April 2015 Jeremy Ranch Market Update. I'm Ron Wilstein, a broker at Keller Williams Luxury Properties Worldwide here in Park City. I'm Doug Olmstead, the seller's consultant for the Wilstein team here in Park City. And we have a lot to report to you, so let's hop right into it. Uh, we're going to begin by sharing with you what's been happening in the Park City real estate market overall, and then we'll zero in on the Jeremy Ranch area. Super. Uh, so 1,392 sales in Park City over the past 12 months. Uh, now that's homes, condos, and vacant land all combined. That's down 1% or 12 sales over the last year. When we break this down into the major, major uh, property category, you can see that homes are down by about 8% from 572 sales the previous year to 525 this past 12-month period. On the other hand, condominiums are up by 6% from 623 sales to 658 and then lots for the most part are unchanged we saw 209 sales this past year same amount the uh, year before point I want to mention on this graph here is that the home number of home sales is down not because of a lack of interest but because of a lack of inventory and that has caused people to either look to buying land or moving toward condos and of course we see that the number of condos is up indeed so, uh, Juan, what does that do with uh, property prices? Well, prices are pretty interesting in the marketplace. This graph here is the home medium sold prices from April 2014 to March 2015. You'll notice in uh, the Park City city limits, the increase of appreciation is 7% from a million two hundred fifty thousand year before all the way to a million three hundred thirty-six two fifty. That's that's incredible. That's, that's a, nice a medium price. prices. Uh, Snyderville Basin, 12% up from 713000 to just below 800799 um, So the year-to-year -year comparison on condo median sale prices um, in Park City City limits are up 9% uh, from 489500 to last year uh, to 535000 this year. And in Snyderville Basin, um, up 7%, so another, another nice appreciation up from 335000 last year to 362500 this year. So our appreciation is good both in the homes and condo market. We turn to lots, we see a slightly different uh, change. In the Park City limits, the median price dropped from 677000 to 550. Statistically, that's a 12% drop, but do keep in mind, this is a really small sampling. We don't have that many lots for sale within the city limits. And you have a smaller sampling, you just can't rely as much on the figures, but they are accurate here. Uh, unchanged in the Snyderville Basin, 300,000 both years. And so that's our look at the overall Park City market. Now, uh, Doug, let's turn our attention to Jeremy Ranch real estate market. Sounds great. So home sales in Jeremy Ranch are down 42% over last year's number of sales. Um, Jeremy Ranch Homes year-to-date comparison of sales, you can see Again, down 42% uh, from 73 sales last year to just 42 sales this year. Now, the absorption rate is how we look at how quickly properties sell over a given period of time based upon the past record and what's available. In Jeremy Ranch, homes are selling at a pace of one sale every nine days. Now, currently, there's 21 homes on the market in Jeremy Ranch, which equates to about a six-month inventory. Now, do keep in mind that uh, national statistics, a nine-month inventory represents a balanced market between buyers and sellers, So, in a, or in a resort town, I should say. So this is actually below that. Uh, Go ahead. So selling prices in Jeremy Ranch, um, pretty big gap. They do range from 426000 all the way up to 2222500 2, with the median sold price being $750,000. And here's where you can see the increase, 725000 the year before. Now, lot sales in Jeremy Ranch are down by 29% over last year's number of sales. Uh, again, keep in mind, this is not a lot of sales that we're looking at. Mm -hmm. The previous year was 17 sales. This past year, 12 sales. So it's a 29% decrease or five fewer sales. Jeremy Ranch lots are selling at a pace of one sale every 30 days. So with an inventory of 11 uh, lots on the market. This equates to an 11-month inventory of <clears throat> properties to be purchased. So the selling prices in Jeremy Ranch, so they range from $190,000 um, to $349,500. Uh, 
um, with the median lot sold price 231000 And that's down 3% from the previous year's values. And there you see it. It was at 237000 now 231000 this past year. Now, if you're interested in receiving a printout of the homes and lots that makes up the data that we presented to you here, you can uh, email either Doug or myself at ron at the com or Doug at the com, And we'll get you that information. Now, here's a way that you can get information about Jeremy Ranch anytime that you want. And uh, you don't necessarily need to contact us, but we're, we're here to assist in any way possible. If you want to bookmark your uh, browser viewparkcityrealestate.com forward slash Jeremy Ranch or the Wilstein team.com forward slash Jeremy Ranch. They'll both go the same place. This will take you to our website and I just want to demonstrate it real quickly. I'm going to go to viewparkcityrealestate.com. That's what you see right in front of you and you could simply do the forward slash Jeremy Ranch or if you want to you could go to our search by subdivisions slide down to Jeremy Ranch. It would take you to the same place. And here we are, and, and what's on this page is some interesting information. We've got four buttons here. The green one is to watch a webinar for an update on the Jeremy Ranch real estate. In effect, you're doing that right now. This is the webinar. Um, then you have two buttons on the lower line, search for homes by subdivisions in Jeremy Ranch or uh, search for condominiums in Jeremy Ranch, and that will help you search more quickly. The button I want to draw your attention to is this blue one, uh, send me current sales data on Jeremy Ranch when you hover over it, it changes colors. But if you click it, it gives you the ability to um, request current information on uh, sales in your neighborhood. And you simply fill in the blanks, your either your address or uh, your subdivision, if you wish, number of bedrooms, bathrooms, and then complete your name and your email address. The other information is optional, but we do send out a newsletter semi-annual, so you may want to do that. If you have any specific questions, fill them out in the uh, comment section and then just click the green button and submit the form. That will come to Doug or myself and, and we'll get you the information that you're after. So it's really quite easy to do that. Now we have to talk about Talisker. <laughs> in Park City, we just love what Talisker gives us in terms of news, news, news. And so I just want to go over what we've experienced. Some of you may be familiar with this. Others may find this new information, but it goes back a couple years, starting with the Battle of the Resorts. This is when there was the conflict between the Park City Mountain Resort and Talisker. It was a multi-year lawsuit uh, that we all watched very carefully as we had uncertainty uh, even coming into this past ski season. Finally, it was resolved uh, between the two parties, which was great news and healthy overall for the marketplace. Uh, Vail Resorts acquired the Park City Mountain Resort. The uncertainty was gone, and now they control basically the uh, uh, the Park City Mountain Resort as well as Canyons Resort, and as you know, that they're going to combine this. Well, we thought that was the end of Talisker when it came to news, but apparently it's not, <laughs> because now Wells Fargo is coming after them with a brand new lawsuit. Now, there's not a lot of information on this, but I want to share with you what we do know, and in our monthly Park City Market Talk webinars, we'll keep you apprised of changes. Wells Fargo Bank filed a lawsuit to foreclose against several Talisker companies. Wells Fargo filed a lawsuit against a group of firms under Talisker corporate umbrella. And from a geographical point of view, this covers areas from Empire Pass all the way out to Tuhei. They're seeking to foreclose on $163.8 million worth of loans and accrued interest. So that is a lot. That's a lot of dough. That's a lot of dough. Uh, the filing says that Talisker operated the Talisker Club in 2014 by obtaining loan advances of approximately $1 million each month. The loans date back to the fall of 2010 when Wells Fargo Bank and the Bank of Scotland agreed to provide this funding. The operation of the Talisker Club is important to the lenders, but they are no longer obligated, nor do they want to advance these additional funds to, to Talisker to allow them to conduct business operation. This is what the lawsuit says. And so they're, they've got a change of attitude and maybe their uh, pocketbooks are just uh, not overflowing like they once were. If you talk to Wells Fargo, they say the foreclosure is imminent. 
their concerns regarding Talisker's motivation and ability to continue to operate the business in an appropriate manner is their biggest concern. And so they've named 14 different defendants in this lawsuit. And as I mentioned earlier, the bank is seeking to foreclose on $163.8 million of loans and accrued interest. The bank uh, wants a senior managing director in a firm called FTI Consulting to be named the receiver in the case. And Wells Fargo has asked that Cynthia Nelson be appointed the receiver and overseer of the assets. So we expect to see her name in the news uh, quite a bit in the future. Yeah. This, the receiver's role, Cynthia, in this case, would be to manage the assets during that foreclosure period of time. And uh, the lawsuit is anticipated to be a high-profile uh, case involving properties, as I mentioned at the beginning, stretching from Empire Pass in Deer Valley all the way to Tuhe. The land involved in this case does not include any portion of the three Park City area resorts, so we're not impacted in that in any way, but um, you know, it definitely will have an impact. This does represent some opportunities coming our way. We can't articulate right at this time what they will be, but if you do want us to keep in touch with you on that, let us know by sending us an email. And uh, as the news develops, we'll report it, but we'll especially keep in contact with those who are most interested in this. So we'll keep you posted on this. That's about all we can say on it now, but uh, it's the beginning of probably a long process. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're interested in learning uh, how much your Jeremy Ranch home or lot is worth in today's market, as we wrap up, I just want to tell you the easiest way to do that. Go to viewparkcityrealestate.com and then scroll down to the learn what your property is worth section and complete the form and email it to either myself or to Doug. Uh, again, I'll just demonstrate it real quickly. Here we are on the website. This is the home page. And as I scroll down a bit below these properties and our webinars, we come to that section, learn what your property is worth in today's market. Again, fill out the blanks. They're very simple. It would take you less than a minute to do this whole thing. And uh, fill in your email address so we can contact you. And there's a section down here with some additional information. If you're interested in, just check any of that apply. And then again, click the submit form and we will get you uh, that information. So it's very, very handy. Uh, feel free to take advantage of it. It's there for your use. By the way, we don't bug you when you ask for information. That's important. Um, we'll get you the information, we're here to help you, but uh, our goal is not to bug you, uh, only to assist you if you want our assistance. So for further news about Jeremy Ranch, or go to the Jeremy Ranch Homeowners Association website. Um, that's jrhoa.com. Um, lots of great information. You can get involved in the community, see when your next board meeting is, have your voice heard that way. Um, so, so just go through that website at your convenience, some, some really nice information there. Great. So if you have any questions whatsoever, email uh, myself or Doug. Our email address is right there. If you want us to call us back, uh, give us your phone number. We're happy to do so. Uh, then finally, we just want to let you know every single month we do a Park City Market Talk webinar. It's approximately a 20-minute presentation. We update it every month on the 15th day of the month. And uh, it will cover information about the market overall, sort of the stuff we covered at the very beginning of this webinar, although in greater detail, and then other important topics as they develop, whether it's the lawsuit between Wells Fargo, Talisker, how to appeal your taxes, whatever is timely, we'll keep you informed about that. So thank you for joining us and uh, have a great day.